Welcome to General Collectibles Review on Castle Ravenloft, a board game made by Wizards of the Coast. It is based off the popular role-playing game Dungeons and & Dragons, and is a dungeon crawl, cooperative play game. You can play with one to five players. The game comes with cards, tokens, dungeon tiles, and a 20-sided die. The miniatures have unique heroes, monsters, and unique monsters. The cards come with hero and villain stat cards that you will need as a reference guide during your hero's or villain's turn. Then there are power cards. At the beginning of the game, you start with two at will, one utility, and one daily power of your hero's class. These power cards match the special abilities that each class gets in the Dungeon and Dragons role-playing game. There are at will powers, which can be used as many times throughout the game. Utility and daily powers can be used, but must be flipped over after use. Once it is flipped over, the hero cannot use it again unless they have a treasure card that lets them flip the card back over. And then there are deck cards. The counter cards are only drawn during the villain phase. These encounter cards have different effects that can be good or bad. Traps and monsters can be drawn from the effect of an encounter card. Monster cards are only drawn if there's a new dungeon tile being explored or if an encounter card has an effect that forces you to draw one. Treasure cards are drawn as a reward when defeating monster. Adventure treasure cards are special treasure cards a hero can get by completing tasks in an adventure. Tokens represent markers and icons that will be used for the 13 different adventures. And the tiles are dungeon tiles that will be placed randomly throughout the exploration of your game. On a dungeon tile, there are squares that will represent where monsters or heroes occupy. A hero or monster can move as many squares equal to their speed. Place dungeon tiles any way you want, making sure that the side matches the unexplored dungeon tile. Before you play the game, you must choose an adventure. There are 13 different adventures to choose from. The adventures mostly depend on the amount of players playing and the difficulty of the adventure. Then each player must choose one of the five hero options. You can choose a fighter, a mage, a rogue, ranger, and lastly, the cleric. Each hero has its special abilities, mostly related to what their classes can do from the Dungeon and Dragons game. Once all players have agreed on an adventure and a hero, you may begin to play the game. You must first place the starting tile on the board, then you can add any other tiles depending on the chosen adventure and what it tells you to do. After placing the starting tiles, the group of players can choose which player goes first through last. Then each player will place their hero miniature on the square next to the stairs on the start tile. On each player's turn, there is a sequence of play. Each turn consists of three phases. The hero phase, followed by the exploration phase, and the villain phase. On the hero phase, you can choose to spend a healing surge token if your character has zero hit points and do one of three options. Move, and then make an attack. Attack, and then move, or move twice. Then, in the exploration phase, if your hero is on a square adjacent to an unexplored edge or says otherwise, then draw a dungeon tile and place it adjacent to the unexplored edge. After you place the new dungeon tile, if it has a white arrow, draw a monster card and place the monster in the bone pile of the newly placed dungeon tile and the monster card in front of you. If it has a black arrow, do the same as the white arrow, but also draw an encounter card. During the villain phase, if you didn't place a new tile on the exploration phase, or if you placed the tile with a black triangle on it, you then draw a card from the encounter deck. Then if there's a villain on the board, it gets its action. And if there are monster or traps that you drew and placed in front of you on this turn or previous turns that are still in play, they get their actions. Each player will continue to play their turns in the order of the sequence of play until the adventure is complete or one hero dies. When a hero dies, the game ends and everybody loses. Once you complete the adventure's mission, everyone wins. Castle Ravenloft is a fun game. We really like the style of play because every player must act together as a team to win the game. The 13 different adventures add variety to the game, and you can even play by yourself, which is an added bonus. You really get your money and time well spent with this game because of the randomness of how each adventure is played, and the quality of the miniatures, cards, tokens, and tiles is very good, which is expected from a Wizard of the Coast game.
Castle of Ravenloft is easy to learn and play for players who know the D&D system, but we think it might prove difficult for newcomers to this type of gaming. Overall, we really like Castle Ravenloft and thought the price tag was worth it all the way. Thanks for watching our review. This is General Collectibles, and please come back to watch more game reviews.